Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Today we're going to take a break from the IC7300 from A to Z series and take a look at modulated CW versus CW. I got a question about MCW after one of the videos on setting up digital mode software with the 7300. The viewer was concerned about using digital mode software to send Morse code on the HF bands and if the IC7300 had any way to prevent that because modulated CW is not legal on HF, at least in the US. I'm not a big CW operator, but the question got me curious, so I did a little bit of research and a little experimenting. Under FCC rules in the United States, modulated CW is not legal below 50 MHz. I believe the rules are similar in most other countries, a key reason for this is that MCW takes up a lot more bandwidth than CW for sending the same information. Modulated CW emission is defined as using an audio tone to modulate an AM carrier. In other words, it's the same thing as a regular AM transmission, except that the only audio is a single tone sending information in Morse code. If you want to learn more about the bandwidth of a conventional CW signal, Mark Amos, W8XR, has a very nice article about it on the W8JI website. You can find a link in the description for this video. Based on this information, it would seem like using digital mode software to transmit CW or Morse code on the HF bands would not be legal. Let's take a look at what I've learned and see if that's actually the case. Here's what I'm going to be using to do my testing. I don't have a lab quality spectrum analyzer, but I did recently pick up an RSP Duo from SDR Play. This is an amazing software defined receiver that covers from 1 kilohertz to 2 gigahertz. I'll be using the free SDR Uno software that goes with the receiver. It includes a spectrum scope that will let us see what my signal would look like on the air. Next I'll be using this 20 watt dummy load so I'm not transmitting my test signals over the air. I'll use FL Digi as my digital mode software to provide the audio tone for the radio and of course I'll be using my IC7300 to generate the test signals. Before we begin the testing here's a very brief overview of the SDR's UNO software. Before we get started looking at the CW signals, if you're not familiar with SDR Uno, this is the free software that comes with the RSP Duo and other RSP receivers. So there's a control panel on the left here that's the main panel for starting and stopping the program, selecting receivers and uh, or which tuner you're using and the inputs and some other major settings. The panel in the middle here is the frequency and mode control panel so you can type in virtually any frequency from 0 to 2 gigahertz here and it supports all the standard radio modes AM, synchronous AM, FM, CW, double sideband and lower and upper sideband and then you have various um, options for each of those modes. Then on the upper right, we have an audio uh, spectrum analyzer panel with a waterfall. And you can turn waterfalls and things on and off. And then the main spectrum analyzer panel down here is the RF spectrum analyzer panel. Now, this is not a laboratory-grade spectrum analyzer, but it's pretty good and reasonably accurate. So for our purposes here to take a look at what modulated CW versus CW looks like, I think this will work fine. For my tests, I'll set the rig in CW mode and generate a steady carrier. Then I'll put the rig in AM mode and generate a modulated CW carrier using FL Digi. Finally, I'll put the rig in sideband mode and use FL Digi to generate a CW carrier. Let's see how it all went. All right, first we're going to just do a single CW tone in CW mode. We're just going to generate a carrier. 
I've got my 7300 set for about 5 watts out. It's connected to a dummy load. And I've got the RSP Duo hooked up and SDR Play running here. So we're set to 7.1 megahertz or 7100 kilohertz. So let's just look at a single CW tone. So it's not exactly zero bandwidth, which would be the theoretical bandwidth with nothing transmitted, no, no information transmitted. Uh, but it's uh, less than, well, about 200 uh, hertz wide or, or thereabouts, 2 to 300 hertz wide by the looks of it. So that's just a single CW tone. And then if we transmit information, the width gets just a little bit wider. So now let's take a look at modulated CW. So we're going to set the rig to AM mode. And I've already got it in AM-D, which is data mode. So that means it's going to be getting its audio from uh, FL Digi, which I have running, and I have that set to an 800 hertz tone, and I just have it in tune mode right now. So it'll just be a solid carrier at 800 hertz. So let's put the rig in transmit and see what we have. So now in RSP uh, or on, in SDR Uno, if you look at the screen here, you'll see that we have the carrier in the center. Whoops, if I can find my uh, mouse cursor here. Sorry, there we go. We have a carrier, and then we have an upper side band at about 800 hertz away, and a lower side band at about 800 hertz away. And then you can also see down, uh, let's see, what are we down? About 10, 20, 30... 35 or so dB down from the carrier. We have two more sidebands out here at 1600 up and down, and that's just uh, a little bit of noise because it's not a perfect sine wave or a perfect audio chain. So if you count these extra sidebands, our bandwidth here is about almost 2 kilohertz up, uh, call it just over 1.5 and just over 1.5 down. So our bandwidth for our whole signal here is just a little over 3 kilohertz. This is why modulated CW, at least transmitting with standard audio frequencies over an AM or FM broadcast, not that you would do FM on low bands, but on anything below uh, 6 meters, modulated CW is not legal in the United States. Now, this would be illegal if it weren't for the fact that I'm just transmitting into a dummy load, so I'm not actually putting anything out over the air outside of my shack here and my little uh, rubber ducky receiver antenna that's next to the radio. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, doing the same thing, because this was the question is, can you use... Uh, digital software like FL Digi to transmit on CW legally on low bands on HF and I believe the answer is yes because the carrier and the signal that you get does not look like modulated um, modulated CW because I'm not doing typical modulation of an AM carrier frequency so let's put the rig into sideband and it's on lower sideband in data mode and again I'm going to use FL Digi I've got FL Digi set to produce an 800 Hertz tone and we will transmit again on one uh, 7.1 megahertz so let's put the rig in transmit and see what this looks like on the spectrum scope here with SDR Uno so now I have just a single carrier, and let me change the frequency here. Uh, I got my tuning step too high. So this should actually be uh, 70992, I believe. Seven, whoops, 
hang on here, bear with me. 7.0992 megahertz. And there we are. So it's 800 hertz below my 7.1 um, megahertz carrier because I've got the radio set for 7.1 megahertz. I'm transmitting an 800 hertz tone. So it's 800 hertz below that. And if you look, this looks just like the CW tone that we saw at 7.1, except it's 800 hertz lower. So why is that? Well, with sideband, with a single sideband radio, I'm on lower sideband right now. And a typical radio, so lower sideband for 7.1, would have a carrier frequency of 7.1 megahertz. But... On single sideband mode, the radio suppresses that carrier, so there is no carrier here. And it also suppresses the opposite sideband, so any information in the upper sideband is suppressed. So the only thing that goes out is the lower sideband, which is my single sine wave tone. So it just looks like an RF carrier that's 800 hertz, the tone frequency, below my set frequency. So if you were to start using SDR Uno, uh, pardon me, if you were to start using FL Digi or any one of the other digital mode softwares to transmit in CW, it's going to look exactly like a CW signal, except it's going to be shifted by whatever you set the audio frequency to. Um, and that's going to be the only difference. It looks to me like using your digital mode software to generate CW from your computer should be perfectly legal if you set everything up the same way that you would for operating RIDI or any other digital mode. Let's generate a short CW test message with both methods as one final test. Here's a message that I programmed into the 7300's CW keyer memory with the keyer set to 13 words per minute. Now, here's the same message sent at the same speed using FL Digi with the rig in sideband data mode. Well, there you have it. The bottom line is this. The rules and regulations for amateur radio dictate power levels and what types of emissions we're allowed to transmit. How we produce that emission is entirely up to us. With computers, software-defined radios, and all technologies evolving every day, the number of ways to produce a particular emission continues to expand along with how much information we can squeeze out of those emissions. That's it for this time. If you subscribe to this channel, thank you for your support. If you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing by clicking on the icon that will pop up in the lower right near the end of the video. I'm always glad to see constructive comments with your thoughts, ideas, suggestions, corrections, and whatever. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.